Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your boy Willie V, aka Bull Boy Kennels. In today's tutorial, we will be going over one of the most, or at least that I find, frequent, frequently asked questions, and that is how to capture from a firewired firewire device to your Mac computer. Now we all know that you can use Final Cut, Final Cut Express, or even iMovie to accomplish this task. However, there are folks that maybe do not have or are not able to afford Final Cut or Final Cut Express. And then in other cases, you have folks that just do not like to use iMovie at all. Maybe they just don't care for the iLife series. So of course, they're going to need another alternative in order to be able to capture from a FireWire device. So I'm going to show you two programs, um, both of which are free and are quite easy to install. The first one is we're going to use a program called Vidi. And let me show you very quick. And this is from mitspedal.com. Software is free. And the other one we'll be using is the Firewire SDK. Now, in order to use the Firewire SDK, you do need to have the developer tools installed on your uh, Mac computer, which when you first install Leopard, it'll actually be on that on that disk itself. So you can actually install that. And then you'll be able to use the Firewire SDK. So I'll provide both these links as to where you can download these uh, free softwares. But for now, let's go ahead and uh, open up Vidi. And let me turn that down. So as you see with Vidi, it already recognizes my FireWire device. And I'll go ahead and I'll turn the volume back up and record a portion of this. All right, so I've gone in and recorded a part of that, and let's go ahead and uh, check that out. Now, the footage is interlaced, so you will see the interlacing in it, but it's easily, easily rectified by going through your QuickTime um, Pro settings and changing it, or QuickTime Pro, I mean, the uh, regular QuickTime. I believe we'll let you do the same, where you can de-interlace the footage. So that's how simple it is to use the VIDI program in order to capture from your FireWire device. Now, the other program, as I said, is part of the uh, FireWire SDK. There's several programs in there that you're able to use to do this, but I like one in particular, which is the Virtual DV. So let's go ahead and I'll launch that. And with Virtual DV, you'll notice a few things. If you go into your preferences, you can actually change the DV format from DV25, DV50, uh, DV20, DV50 Pro. Now, as long as your device is imported in that type of footage, you'll be able to record it. Whereas my device, I'm using the uh, Canopus 300. And again, you can use pretty much any FireWire device that's connected. So in my case, I would need to use the DV25 NTSC. So what we'll do is we'll create a new file. And I'll save this to my desktop. I'll call it test. Now we have the file set up. And all we do is click on record. Now the only thing is with this one, there you don't have a preview. So you don't actually get to see what it is you're recording. As where with the video program, you actually see what you're recording while you're recording it. As far as importing footage from a FireWire device. Now, this could be a camera, um, a, a video camera, a tape deck, anything that allows FireWire output. 
So let's go ahead and uh, stop that. And I'll go ahead and uh, close out virtual DV. And here's the file that we just recorded. So let's go ahead and uh, open that up. And again, this footage is, is imported as interlaced. So as you can see from here, it is interlaced. Now, as I was saying, if you have QuickTime Pro, I believe the regular QuickTime probably does this. I'm not entirely sure. But if it does, just go to your properties, video track, de interlace, and then if you save it out, it'll save it as being de interlace. So that way, when we go to the beginning, instead of having all the lines that go through it, you, don't, you no longer have that. So again, those are just two quick ways, or at least free ways, in order to capture from a FireWire device to your Mac computer without having to spend any money. Now there is another program, which they're very expensive. One is around 200 and something, and the other I forget what the price is. I'm not going to bother to mention the names, only because you can do the same thing with these free programs as you would with the paid application. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that quick tutorial on how to import from a FireWire device to your Mac computer using these two free applications. As always, this was Willie V, aka Boo Boy Kennels of iTexture.com. And as always, thank you for taking the time to watch.